Can you possibly imagine yourself being violently decompressed before you could even process what was happening? In a single, heart-stopping moment, you go from working a routine job to being blinked out of existence. For six divers of the Bifork Dolphin oil rig, this is exactly what took place, culminating in history's worst diving accident. On November 5, 1983, in the Frigg gas field in the Norwegian sector of the North Sea, the Byford Dolphin, a semi-submersible, column-stabilized drilling rig operated by Dolphin Drilling, was having deep sea maintenance being performed by the four divers, Roy P. Lucas, Edward Coward, Truls Helvik, and Bjorn Gaver Bergeson, and their two accompanying dive tenders, William Crammond and Martin Saunders, on the rig on the surface. Unlike most divers, the four maintenance divers were expected to work 18-hour days on only three hours of sleep, while spending up to 28 days in a small compartment of two highly pressurized living chambers stationed on the rig, including an escape pod and lifeboat, and a trunk that connected a separable deep-sea diving bell in order to perform the work without needing to constantly resurface. This enabled them to labor far longer than otherwise possible, while the dive tenders on the rig could pull them up or lower them down via the diving bell to the necessary depth. The accident occurred during the decompression process in one of the rig's decompression chambers. Before the chamber door on the living quarters could be sealed and decompressed, William Crammond performed a premature removal of the clamp between the trunk that connected chamber one to the diving bell. Either from a miscommunicated order or an audio hallucination caused by the fatigue of the long working hours. This resulted in severe explosive decompression as the chamber's internal pressure of 9 atm, or 9 times, the pressure of the Earth's atmosphere on the surface, rapidly equalized with the external pressure, going from 9 to 1 in an instant. As a result, the force of the decompression caused catastrophic injuries and an instantaneous death to those inside the chamber as nitrogen boiled and returned to its gaseous form while in their bloodstream and fat solidified in their bodies. One diver, Truls Helovic, suffered particularly gruesome injuries as he was standing directly in front of the interior chamber door at the time of the accident, which had been jammed open with only a 24-inch slit causing the entirety of his body to be sucked out of the chamber and shredded like fresh meat in a grinder. The tenders outside also weren't left safe, as the diving bell was sent flying like a cannonball, striking William Crammond in the head, who later succumbed to his injuries, and landing partially on Martin Saunders, who suffered two collapsed lungs as well as a broken neck and several shattered vertebrae, barely escaping with his life. He would be the only one to survive the accident. In the aftermath, the Biford Dolphin incident brought significant attention to the Norwegian government concerning the safety standards and practices in offshore drilling operations, particularly diving operations and decompression procedures. Notably, calls of corruption and cover-ups were laden between the families of the victims and the press, especially more so after it was discovered the rig was equipped with most of its original infrastructure and equipment from the mid-1970s, meaning it lacked critical improvements that would have prevented this very kind of accident in the first place. Following the investigation, media firestorm, and multitude of lawsuits, there were calls for improved safety measures, stricter regulations, and better training for personnel involved in underwater drilling operations. This unnecessary disaster should haunt us as stark reminder of the dangers associated with deep-sea saturation diving and long-term offshore drilling operations, stressing the importance of rigorous safety protocols, extensive training, and humane conditions for the men working in the field. If you enjoyed this video, kindly leave a like and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.